Hello again and welcome to RP0 America. So now that I've got the graphics looking nicer, uh, I have some missions to carry out. So I've got two rockets on the go. I've got them, you know, they're built for a Jupiter mission. Um, kind of tried to try to stick to a uh, <coughs> kind of a standard naming scheme again. Hopefully I can succeed at that. Uh, the great, uh, the Oak and Great Oak are basically variations of the Atlas vehicle. They're, you know, pretty much that just various versions, whereas like the real atlases are like called Atlas, SLV, and LV3, you know, just names that don't really stick easy in my mind, whereas I like strings of related things are probably uh, easier. Anyway, so we've got one ready to go, um, and the other constructing, but we're well away from the Jupiter uh, launch window, and that's the next one. And the next tech we will unlock at about the same time uh, includes the F1 engine, and I'm sure plenty of configs for other engine, maybe the uh, like a, the S1B version of the H1 engine, for all I know. But I don't know. I'm, obviously, what I'm actually interested in in that tech uh, node is the F1 engine. So let me just confirm to, to, to heavy orbital rocketry. Yeah, and it's got. It does have some other ones that I will be developing. Like I'll be developing some of the uh, lunar engines because I'll be wanting to use them for my um, my actual crewed orbital and landing mission. So I'll have to do some development flights for those as well. But I'm actually you know, excited to do development flights for the F1. I could just hire a research team, but uh, I, that's not how, how I plan to do it. So let's just warp and get us warped to this Jupiter window. <laughs> yeah, I did some fiddling. I, had, I turned off the pretty water, um, and I have left it with three cloud layers although I still want to do a little bit of experimentation with that. So I don't want to warp to that. I want to warp to this Jupiter window. Oh man, that warp is really fast. I suppose it... Okay, so that's seven days um, out, whereas this Jupiter window is ten days out. So that's nice. <laughs> so I've got both ready. Actually, um, sure, shut that. Uh, let's kill the warp. So that one's in storage. Uh, so let me change launch pads so I can roll, have them both rolled out. So I, I don't need to launch them right at the same time. They're not going for rendezvous or anything. But I can have them both rolling out at the same time. Uh, Alright, so three days away from the Jupiter window. Hmm, so I'll send this one up um, a little early. Why not? Um, because it, it just uh, the way it tends to be with these interplanetary windows, they're not instantaneous windows. It, it's not, you don't have to be super precise. Like within a few orbits or days of that window, the window kind of opens and closes slowly, and you, you get variations around how long the time of the time of flight is there. Variations of you know, the amount of delta v you'll need, but effectively it's still it's still good. Uh, you can still I can probably still do the injection and right after you know, the the trip to Jupiter right after this. So again, I apologize. I don't recall if I show the construction of this vehicle, so regardless, I will be discussing it a bit uh, during this mission. So let's see. Let's just target this, which is kind of in the plane of the moon there, because sending something towards Jupiter from the vaguely, you know, to any interplanetary mission from vaguely the plane of the ecliptic, uh, the plane of the moon, sorry, I'm sure those terms mean different things. I just can never quite memorize the subtle differences. Um, but that's a good place to, to launch from. So I will wait until we're in that plane. A little bit of time warping. So yeah, this is the, the smaller of the two launch vehicles I'll be using to send things to Jupiter. This is uh, a s smaller version of a uh, smaller Atlas. They, they look very similar, but I'll point out a difference you'll see on the other one uh, just in a moment once we get warped to this relative inclination because I don't want to blow by it. I'll also probably lower the cloud layers. I usually just kind of spread the separate them out a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got some of the cloud layers higher than they way way higher than they should be, um, just to have them spaced out so I could have seen them separately. Anyway, so Atlas first stage. Uh, there's so this is this tank as you see. It's this is this pretty much exactly what this is. The Atlas uh, LV-3C, and then the other one will have a procedural tank on top of that, just to kind of stretch it, and it's going to have more powerful first stage engines. I think the two booster engines are a more powerful variation. All right, so close enough to that plane. Let's go. And so over here, I've still got it reporting memory usage and frame rate. Actually, the frame rate has been pretty good uh, during these tests. Maybe it was that uh, just the construction of that other rocket I was using that was helping or contributing to the frame rate coming down. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's not too bad here. It's still, I still see a huge bias when I say look when I look towards the ocean. Oh, weird, the sun is in a position. Oh yeah, pretty close to right above me, so that uh, doesn't it doesn't isn't currently leaving a path. Um, I'm not seeing a reflection of the sun on the water, and the terrain is on facing guest that my frame rate was uh, boosted um, because somehow I accidentally turned off the. Uh, the terrain beautification, but it is in fact on. Okay, so let's pitch over a few degrees. In my test run for this, the center engine, um, I had a failure of it, uh, which was interesting. Uh, it was kind of the worst type of failure. It um, both decreased in thrust as well as of efficiency. Uh, but with this design, like this is pretty much the heaviest thing you ever throw with this old version of Atlas, where if you throw it with a, like a centaur and a payload on top, and uh, a centaur stage is, is pretty big, and so let me level that back out. So as a result, um, you, the, the, the ideal time to shut off the two booster engines and drop it uh, isn't very far away from when the whole thing will burn out anyway. So because the central engine was actually, like the whole, uh, if you're uh, not familiar with the, with the Atlas launch vehicle, it's, it's three engines, the center one is uh, lower thrust, and at this point, you can see it's now, it's already higher efficiency than the two booster engines, as that's the way it's designed. And it's a sustainer engine that will run, is designed to run after these other two uh, will are, fall off. They're kind of in a, a separate sleeve. Oh, I really should be pitched way down. I don't want, I can't pitch too far away from the prograde because there is substantial um, dynamic pressure. Um, but because the center engine um, failure, w you know, damage was causing it to be le actually less efficient than the booster engines, I just kept the whole thing on and changed my trajectory a bit. And it did appear to be a successful mission, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, see the frame rate? It drops noticeably when I'm pointed out towards the ocean, uh, which because the ocean pretty much looks exactly the same as an ocean without fancy features on when the sun isn't there is a bit disappointing, but you know, hey. It is a, a fairly pretty looking ocean when uh, the sun is there. Okay, I don't really care about the target, and dynamic pressure has dropped enough that I can start doing some serious correction. <laughs> it's a pretty kind of weird looking craft, and it's, it's relatively unstable, I think. Like, MechJib does have a bit of trouble controlling it. it. It was wobbling a bit during some of my tests. Um, but it's, it's, it's uh, pretty powerful. Like this Centaur upper stage was used on uh, on variations of the Titan launch vehicle uh, with solids uh, with with two sol solid strap-ons uh, as the first stage. Like if you want to go above, like this is what a hundred and fifty ton launch vehicle. So if you want to go up from this, it makes sense, like in terms of size, but with this um, diameter of technology, uh, using a Titan using the Titan two style makes sense. Um, yeah, and then various evolutions of the Centaur were you know, were used for many things. Just yeah, yesterday for me, uh, it was used to launch Osiris Rex, uh, a variation of the of the Centaur. Uh, just basically, it's a it's a good design pattern. It's a good concept. It's a you know a, a very light uh, tank and tanking structure, and very efficient single or double RL10 engine. And they still you know they still call it the RL10. Use that designation to today. So I dropped that probably a little earlier than I should. You would see the you know, the change of burn time there, but in part I did that because we're really lobbing it, and so there isn't really much delta v left uh, to be dropped. Oh, and 100 kilometers. So let's drop the fairing cover, and you can see the rest of the of the vehicle. Uh, there isn't a ton of delta v left in this, so rather than um, have it burn out early and go to the centaur, instead I'm uh, just using it to kind of delay to get us um, on a different trajectory by the time we get the centaur going. So yeah, the centaur is the next stage and it will get us to orbit and from there uh, we uh, this the Atlas centaur isn't quite powerful enough to send a probe uh, to send this probe at least to Jupiter on its own so uh, just like a number of missions to the outer planet we all to the outer planets we also have a kick engine here. Now it's labeled as non-RO, you know, I mean to look into that, uh, but it was a relatively reasonable price. It is configured for realism overhaul. Uh, it's, it should be unlocked at this point in the tech tree, uh, so, but it's, you know, it's a pretty good engine for this and it might even have actually been uh, like the type of kick engine that was used for the kick motor used for this type of thing. 
Yeah, so we're really lobbing it, which shouldn't hurt us too badly, but uh, in terms of delta v. But I mean, that's in part why I use uh, you know basically build two. If you're trying, if you really want to get a mission done, whoop, uh, we made a transition at what, what did I note? About 168 kilometers is my best guess. And so as a result, like that's when the frame rate really jumps. Like you can see, the frame rate is way better than it was below that altitude. Um, and I'll, I'll be looking into the configs to figure out exactly what happens then, like if that's when scales, something special happens between scaled space and PQS um, rendering territory, or something about when maybe the um, scatter uh, ocean kicks, uh, like stops being rendered and just goes with a kind of a normal looking ocean. Um, but that's why it kind of a, a rough transition there. So yeah, we're lobbing it pretty high for, for my standards, but I mean, you know, th ultimately we're aiming, we're kind of heading towards 300 kilometers, which isn't terribly high. So we'll be fine. I usually stick uh, in these because it's just a, like a low parking orbit. We don't stay there for more than one orbit or two. <clears throat> then we're, we are safe at those really low altitudes I go to, but in, if we were to circularize around 300 by 300, um, a craft could actually stay up there for like a week, maybe a month, not quite a month, I don't think. Um, Gemini stayed around that altitude, but I believe it uh, would uh, use the engine to kind of do station keeping because it would probably lose a little bit of altitude every day or a few days uh, just by gradual drag on the tiny bit of atmosphere that's left at that point. Uh, so you can see this um, is leveling off now. So I'm just going to go to uh, control. Let's see. Um, didn't completely level off, so let's stick around. A pitch of 10 and we don't have to we're not trying to hold precisely to uh, this relative inclination although it looks like we're actually creeping to, uh, closer to it with this uh, specific orientation I think things look uh, a lot better though I'm glad I kind of took the week off and spent a you know what, what bit of time I had last week to uh, add the new cloud uh, you know to enable the new cloud layers now we've got three cloud layers uh, and I, oh, I still haven't had a chance to face into Dade just shared his, I believe it was the scatterer profiles. I think I'm just using the ones in RVE, uh, RSSVE right now. So I'll take a look at uh, his scatterer profiles. I feel like I was, usually I have a spare screen on when I'm, when I'm doing work, when I'm at work. And the, I always have like the video feed from the ISS. It's, I don't think it's a live feed um, because half of the time of, a, of an actual live feed would be in the dark. Um, but you know it's, it's kind of pre, uh, pre um, good footage from the last couple days or week I so or so I think and it uh, in here it looks a bit more red at the horizon than it actually seems to in that video so I think that's one thing I would tone down I do like that and I think it's called extinction the setting in scatterer I do kind of like that red look but it's much more obvious and uh, over land that quite shouldn't quite look that way and I think Africa is still a bit bright for me but that's okay. So this is a bit different of a tra trajectory than I usually do. Uh, usually I w wouldn't let the velocity, because um, right now we're falling, you know, 200 meters per second. And I usually wouldn't let it get that negative before I leveled it back off by adjusting the pitch. But because we lobbed so high, I'm okay. That allows me to lob to a higher altitude so at some point during my trajectory, but to end up leveling off to a lower altitude. And it, it is a really tricky process. I'm sure ultimately it's just the output of, for me, it's an output of experience. You could probably write a program to do it, I'm sure. Uh, it would just be the output of calculus. Um, but it's, it's a, I find it a little weirder of, of a tricky maneuver, but because the fairly good thrust to rate, uh, weight ratio of these engines, you don't need to lob that way. Uh, which you, I would have had to do, let's say, if I had designed this with just one engine. Then it would literally have half of the acceleration that, that this stage has had, and twice the burn time. So in practice, I don't think this RL-10 could uh, can sustain for that long to s burn the same amount of fuel in twice the time. I would have to look into that. Uh, we are approaching orbital velocity. We're still nowhere near leveled out. That's why I'm kind of staying at this really high pitch. And then as soon as we hit, uh, as soon as this hits zero, I'll level off and then kind of review, because we'll probably be just a few seconds away from orbit at that point. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yep. So that's just predictions from experience. All right, level off. It's going to probably pop slightly below. Oh, time to apo is not bad at all. I'll probably add one, but it looks, yeah, not too bad. 
and then I just went up one degree and that's enough for it to there we go so as you see we um, we went to what was about 270 280 kilometers and that bit of lob was enough to have me low you know to drop 20 30 kilometers let me switch to free cam I need to check if there's a mod to kind of default to free cam because I prefer that just like there's a mod to enable this have this pop open when uh, when you switch to this map view all right so let's see so if you look at this uh, Kerbal alarm clock uh, you will see that it takes quite a bit of Delta V to get to Mars and actually more than it currently lists me as having uh, that is uh, part of the plan uh, because I have I do have Delta V locked away in, in these uh, I just don't currently have to use it and I think yeah there's HDP here and I have four little quad thrusters and so as you can see I do have the ability to ullage and do various things without having to burn any of the RCS up here, which is awesome. So right now we just get to progress through a bit of a coast. So this is an estimate, you know, it's related to the launch window. So let me go calculate a new, uh, new launch parameters to Jupiter from here. <laughs> so nope, that is not Jupiter. Good job, Kyle. Jupiter. All right. So part of the reason to do this, to use a, a kick motor, specifically what I mean with this design, uh, is, um, if let's say you know, we'd had more oomph in the first stage, so this centaur was able to uh, push us to Mars on its own. So what it, what that would mean is if we hadn't had to have this kick motor, so our probe would be on the way to Jupiter, and so would this entire centaur. So this entire dry mass, um, even though you don't usually necessarily think of it that way, but this whole thing would also have to have been sped up enough to go to Jupiter. <laughs> Uh, whereas here we you know, we'll be accelerating it all the way to orbit like we have we'll be accelerating at most of the speed to get to Jupiter and then this extra little this much much smaller motor is all that's going to come to Jupiter along with our probe you know we don't actually won't bring the booster uh, this solid rocket with us on the way to Mars um, but it's the only mass we have to accelerate up to that full speed so that's why just adding uh, a, sm a smaller engine or like another stage to something will give you a little bit more of an edge, a little bit more delta V than you'd originally planned um, without it. So Jupiter is our target. So let's pull up Mech Jeb's um, maneuver planner. Yeah, that's what I want. Close you. All right. I always seem to do that. I always select the planet before I've pulled that up. All right. So let's say ASAP duration. Uh, departure anytime now. If I create a node, it says in 33 minutes. So that's that's good. Um, and it does appear to hit. Oh, nice. I love that. It says in 1966, we'll be doing the flyby. That's quite a bit of time from now. Yep. We're in 63. Ooh, interesting pattern. Almost like voxely. All right. So I like that. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, let's see. Lead time, auto warp uh, tolerance. Hmm. Okay, I'm okay with that. I don't think I need to keep this open right now, and I'll save just in case MechJip kind of mucks up the burn, and I want to come back and do it manually or something like that. I'm pretty sure I accepted a contract for this, but um, I won't look right now. Don't worry about it. That's the problem. You're thinking about it. Don't think about it. All right, so I'm going to point towards the burn. Um, and I suppose I don't necessarily need to. So I like to think of it this way. So even though if, if I'm not going to stop at the burn, um, now I'm kind of in a trajectory that should pass through that burn you know, every n seconds. And so when I actually get there, like to, to the burn time, uh, it will be much closer to the burn time at least. <laughs> uh, we will be able to just kind of null that out. Oh, it looks like we're going into the dark, so that's my cue to turn you on. And look at that pretty um, Earth, atmosphere, sun, etc. All right, it's going to be a pretty long burn. Um, so that's obviously wrong. Um, Nathan Kell described that. Was it in a stream I watched watch recently? Is a good point. He he was talking about how the stock burn time assumes that your uh, your acceleration isn't going to change, um, which is an assumption, and sometimes it's true, and in, in many cases it's not. So the the acceleration through this burn is going to be much different than the acceleration at the beginning of the burn. Therefore, this kind of stock burn time is wrong. Even though other mods and tools and such can make that estimation, stock doesn't. Um, it, it makes an assumption and doesn't kind of make a, a more refined estimation. 
All right, so let me think about how I'm going to have to carry out this burn. Hold on now. So first off, I of course want to make sure the engines are stable. Uh, let's just point a node. And that's why I have all four of these little thrusters down here with all their various directions. So we'll be able to ullage forward without using our actual probe. And one thing I need to remember to do as well is I want to spin things up before uh, before we do the burn, before we separate and fire the solid, because the solid can't gimbal. We may not, might not even have control. I don't see an avionics unit attached here, so we may not have control while the solid is burning. Uh, okay, so it's going to kind of keep wobbling back and forth, so I'm just going to manually level this out, and the engine nozzles are dancing. kind of wish the default was that they wouldn't, that they would only um, gimbal if they were on, if they're actually actively providing thrust, but that might be a, a, like a... a uh, an annoying load on the code to have to keep checking. Should I gimbal? Um, am I burning? Should I gimbal? Am I burning? Just like kind of how everything has to check. Engines have to check every frame or whatever. Like, uh, <laughs> do I have fuel? Do I have fuel? And that, in part, slows things down as well. Uh, okay, so we're kind of pointed. So let me think about this. So we have a minute, 17 seconds left in this uh, in this stage. Okay, and then 55 seconds worth of solid. So let's say that's about two minutes and change of burn time. So we're going to want to start burning uh, about a minute before the node. Okay, so let us point. And I don't need to spin it up beforehand because these engines are fine. And there's two engines here, so I can actually just use this. So I can just hit Q or E uh, to start uh, start rolling, uh, use the roll thrusters um, before. Okay, let's see if that can kind of null it out. Notice how it's kind of trying to figure it out itself. Because I just hit T turned on SAS to see if it could figure it out. So that's good enough. I'm close enough. It's probably going to wander a, <laughs> yep. it's going to wander a bit off here. Uh, that's one reason I keep kind of um, hemming and hawing about persistent rotation because uh, I'd, I'd love the way it looks. It definitely feels more realistic and everything. It just, oh, <laughs> just a moment. Looks like it got hot enough in here that the AC kicked on. <laughs> it's always a struggle to record a video without that noise in the background. Uh, but soon summer will be over and that won't be a problem. So we're getting closer to that. Ah, da -da -da -da. All right, let's try to null that out a bit. I'll wait until I'm a bit closer to the burn time to precisely point there. Sorry, I don't recall what I was saying before I had to quickly go kill that. <laughs> yeah, that roll will work. Yeah, persistent rotation, it um, it feels, I you know, really like the way it feels and things. I, just, I did like the old feature where I could just simply turn on SAS and um, then time warp and it would just kill the rotation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's wait until we're a minute out from my estimated burn. So two minutes away there and I figured I want to start burning a minute before the node. And so that is what I will do. Okay, so let's point it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty big burn. Like that is twice as much delta V as you need to say throw something at the moon or Mars. And it's not just you know twice as much say fuel. Like that's you know the same same idea uh, argument that holds for getting to orbit holds here, right? All the fuel that I need for say the last three thousand meters per second, I also have to speed up through the first three thousand meters per second, right? So it's quite a bit of uh, mass we'll be burning, so I'll kind of take note of, just out of my own curiosity and random love of numbers, I'm going to take a note of this number and kind of see how it evolves through this burn and at the end. Because this, this is a fairly small probe, maybe 200, 400 kilogram, if that. It's pretty small. Okay, so we're approaching that burn. Let's just make sure this engine is, yep, yeah, we've made it stable. And then I will tell it to point at node. Oh, okay, point at node and uh, throttle up. Turn off the RCS because I don't currently need that, and I don't need a view on this anymore. So hopefully these engines don't fail. They're not perfect. Oh, okay. Well, I have as much data as I can, but they're still not perfect. It's a neat thing about um, test flight. Um, even if you have the maximum reliability on your engines, they could totally still fail. Okay, so I'm no longer going to have it point directly at the node because I am going to want to start changing things pretty soon. Uh, 50 seconds left. Let me just warp a bit through some of this. I'm trying to cut down the, t you know, how much time I have to wait through this burn. Do do do. 30 seconds left. 
20 seconds left. And as you can see, the g-forces are increasing substantially. So during the last 10 seconds of this burn, I'm going to spin the stage up just using this. I could use the RCS as well. I just find this pretty badass, so that is why I did that. And I stopped gimbling it because, man, it's uh, spinning fast enough as is. All right, and go. So there we go. I don't have control of the vessel currently. So we are you know, 1.446 tons at burnout, and we can't control that amount of mass. So I've got it set up such that this burn can be carried out. That's OK. I'm fine without avionics control at this stage. And this is like a weird, tricky mid thing. It's like it's a pretty complex thing to set up, I find. Uh, OK, I can open these tanks now. My RCS is off, so it's not going to start firing in any crazy kind of manner. And then you can actually see all the delta V I do have. Um, it, it's, a, it's a tricky thing to design in, into your payload. And I personally find it just a little bit beyond kind of the, the checklist that I'm good at going through and getting right every time. The make sure you have avionics at the right time in the right place when you want to use a solid stage. But in this case, that worked out really smoothly, like the operation. But I assure you, it's usually not so easy to get that to carry out well. Because lots of times where I wanted to use, say, a solid to slow down, like a probe on the way to the moon, uh, and then I you know, screw something up. All right, so, and that's how much delta V it says we still need. So let us just drop that solid stage. It fired it off pretty crazily. So it's going to come, oh, no, 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 why? Oh, I see, it's thrusting forward. So it is doing what I wanted to do. It just kind of looked like it was doing something crazy. So we can kill off this spin in a bit. Uh, we obviously don't need this spin. Um, and we have some RCS fuel in this. So it's a pretty low thrust at this point. This is kind of how I treat like uh, geostationary satellite missions, for example, uh, where the last bit of the job, let's say circularizing a geostationary orbit, can be carried out at a pretty low thrust to weight ratio, but not super low. I wouldn't recommend going below, say, 0.1 Gs. Um, and you can just add more RCS quads or just like a full one kilonewton engine, which is basically a basically a RCS thruster because it's uh, infinitely relatable, I believe. <laughs> okay, so pretty soon I'm going to uh, eliminate that. Hmm. So we are not perfectly on the blue path, as you can see there. Um, but I'll, at some point, I'm going to eliminate this maneuver node since we're not, we don't need it. We're not currently actively using it for anything. And then I'll just kind of visually guide it in. So what is the altitude of Jupiter? Obviously, it changes as you know, it's an elliptical orbit, so the altitude changes. But let's see, 740 there. So we're moving. Oh, we're actually more than that right now. So yeah, this is one of the spots where Jupiter is actually further away from the sun than the minimum, apparently, because 740, 750, but we're getting there. Man, and by the time, on the way to Jupiter, Jupiter is going to move through half an orbit. So that's many years, um, a few, what is it, two years, three years? Yeah, it was 1966, so three years-ish, right, because that shows a month and that shows a day of the year. It's hard to please everyone, but man, Agathorn did a great job on getting it to show the year and all that time information, and even showing it here. Uh, okay, so we're pretty close. Pretty close. So beyond just getting to the Jupiter system, I don't have any goals with this, but of course, like everything can be a stretch goal, right? So let me kill that, and now it's going to spaz out. Okay, yeah, a little more thrust to get closer. Yeah, so there's going to be some mid-course corrections and fun like that. Um, but right now I'm just going to try to get it really close because I can adjust everything. I've got, you know, 1,082 days to adjust everything and see if I can maybe actually get uh, some science by flying by some of the other planets uh, just as kind of a practice of... Um, I'm not sure why it's not showing the path beyond that. I'll have to check what my conic sections settings are. Like if I set as tar... Okay, well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Yeah, let's check my conic section target, uh, my chronic, uh, conic section settings. Sorry, don't know why I had so much trouble saying that. In the meantime, let us just do a quick save before I have a chance to screw anything up and spin this uh, puppy down a little bit. Oh, weird. Um, it seems to be spinning more than I recall it spinning. And I currently don't have it. Um, oh, man, I can't even tell which direction it's spinning in. Like, I'd like to. Uh, 
thrust in whichever direction would reduce. Oh, is it going to spin itself to death? I hope not. Definitely hope not. Oh, camera's unhappy. Okay, so let me just uh, temporarily, hopefully it doesn't kill itself. Um, there is a setting I usually use for docking where it will show. Da -da -da -da. Don't recall which menu it's in, but it will show the angular momentum of the craft. Hmm, not sure where it is, but we're pretty much at the end of the video here. I'm just going to spin this down. Target, heading to target, no. Docking, there we go, docking guidance, angular velocity, or no. <sighs> Sorry. Position, velocity, yeah, I'll find that anyway. Um, but this has been RP0 America. Uh, we have sent our first probe towards Jupiter, uh, and I just need to spin it down a bit, and then uh, I'm not quite sure what it'll be in the next video. Definitely, uh, you know, likely the launch of the next uh, vehicle. I might, you know, see Earth uh, as it recedes again, etc. I'm just worried about how crazy this camera is behaving, so I'm just going to end the video now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.